Hey guys, it is me Stace. For today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of sewing. I want to make some placemats for our dining room table and I thought I would share with you guys the process and what I'm using. So for the fabric today, what I'm using are these jelly rolls. Hubby got me two of these for Christmas. I believe they're from Joann's. Basically what a jelly roll is are strips of fabric. In this case, these are two and a half inches wide by 42 inches long. This one has 20 strips, 10 designs, two of each one. So a lot of little strips in here that you can make a lot of things with. My first thought was to make a jelly roll quilt, but after seeing the colors, I thought they'd be perfect for my kitchen. I have the Pioneer Woman color theme in my kitchen and you can see all the colors there really do match that well. So there's a jelly roll and I already went ahead and took one apart to show you guys all the different colors and patterns. So you can see there's grays, there's blues, pinks, some yellows, some glittered ones. So really, really fun, lots of different colors. So you wanna have all your strips done. And this is a quilt as you go placemat. So you wanna pick up some batting. I'm just using this polyfill project fleece we got from Walmart. Then you wanna take your background fabric and you wanna have that measure your placemat. Now the video I'm following, I'll link below is from Jordan Fabrics. Her backing was 15 by 20. That's rather big to me for a placemat. So I just copied the ones I currently have and all of mine are about 13 by 18. So I have my backing fabric here, and this is just a simple cotton fabric I got from Walmart. So I already have this piece of fabric cut 13 by 18 or whatever measurement you want, and I have my batting behind that about a half inch larger. And you want four of them, because we're making four placemats. So we have one there, we have one here, one here, and one here. Now I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is a quilt as you go placemat. So as you're sewing it together, you're also quilting at the same time. So they're already done, ready to wait, ready to go. Then I'll share with you guys the process. So once we have our backing material done, our batting fabric cut a little bit larger than our backing, you're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew all the way around all four sides to secure this to the batting. I may or may not do that, I'm not quite sure yet. All right, so when you have that, when you flip it over, you will see your sewing designs and you're gonna work on this side, okay? Because this part here becomes your backing. Then you wanna go ahead and take your strips of fabric. You can see here is one strip there or two pieces there. Here is another one. And what I like about this is there's no rules. Um, we're gonna make this all kinds of wonky. We're not gonna go straight. I like the way that looks. Okay. So just lay out your strips the way you like them. And what you can see, they're much longer than I need. Okay, with this, in my case, is a plus because I'm gonna cut each one in half, which will give me four strips total. So you'll see here, if I pick all these guys up, I already went and took these ones. So I already went ahead and cut these. So I have four pieces here, okay? Longer than I need, so I can put one of these on each placemat. I'm not gonna make them match, but I will use the same fabric design on each placemat. But it's, so this one might be here, my next placement it might be over there, just to be a little bit different. So I have those done. Let's pick up another piece here. I'm not even measuring, just cutting a little bigger than I need. I'm gonna cut it in half first. And again, there's four pieces of fabric here. Cut these guys. And on their extra. So I'm gonna take all these guys, set them aside. I'm gonna cut these ones in half. And then cut them a little bit longer than I need. And I'm going maybe an inch and a half, two inches longer than what I need them for. Take one here, I'm setting my other ones aside. And I already went and ironed all these already. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut them. Longer, and you can, of course, lay them all out and use a rotary cutter, but I'm just gonna show you guys how I'm doing it. Okay. So I have those to go for so far. I'm gonna make, the, make sure they're more straight at the end. Cut them in half. Lay them out to where they're longer than what I need. So I have room at the top and the bottom. Lay that one down. Okay, and again, I love how there's glitter in them too. 
and these are all cotton, so is my backing fabric, and all that came from Walmart. I believe the jelly rolls, I think he got them from Joann's. Okay, so there's that one here. Let's grab this guy. So yeah, I just took those strips, folded them in half, and now I'm just cutting them. Okay, I'm going to take one of them. Okay, for here, and I have two more. And this is going to be a super quick project. Okay, let's take the one out, put there, and then this one, I like the gray. And this, will, this video will be in a few steps, like today I'll probably make one placemat with you guys and I'll make the other three off camera. Then we're going to go ahead and make the binding. Now, um, I'm not, I've never done binding before on a quilt. I would always serge the edges, but today we're, we're going to try to do some binding. All right, so all my strips here. Now the idea is what you're going to do when you're, when you get ready to start sewing, you're going to take these, take your first strip, put it anywhere you want. I'm going to kind of have it go hang over a little bit, just like that. So if you're seeing on this side how it's hanging over my batting. Take your second strip, oh, I have two of them here. You're going to put them um, right sides together, just like that, and sew. Okay, so at the same time, you're sewing these two pieces together, but you're also creating a sewing line down on the back, so you're creating your quilt. Okay, then you're going to open these up. That'll look like that. Okay, you know, and you just keep on following that same pattern. So you're going to have this one face down, or face up, face down, and keep on going. Okay, so like I said, I have my 10 strips here, which is more than enough to make the place mess. Just got to figure out what order, what color, and that kind of thing. I don't really want pinks next to pinks. I don't want blues next to blues. Okay, and I have these two still here. So I might, so I might play around with them a little bit, but all right, let's go to the sewing machine. We'll go to the next step. Alright guys, here we are at the machine. I have my batting fabric down and my backing fabric face up. I'm going to sew a quarter inch on my backing fabric all the way around all four sides. Okay, let's get a cut or string. All right, so now you can see, let me move this out of the way. So now you can see on the back side, hopefully, we have our stitching line. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take one of our fabrics, and I have all of mine lined up here. Take one of these strips, and we're going to place this. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're going to place this face down, but you want to make sure we're covering that line. Okay, so I'm going to put that one right there, and I want to put, actually, no, you want to put it face up. Okay, so face up. Let's grab another piece, and we're going to put that one face down on top of it. Now, here's where it can be kind of fun. If you want to go straight or you want to go crooked, I mean, there's no rule here. I'm actually going to take my quarter inch foot off and put on my regular foot. Okay, so you can see, hopefully here, okay, we have our batting and our backing is face down. We see our line, you wanna lay your first strip face up, covering that line on the left-hand side. Your second strip is gonna go on top of that. Now they can go any way you want. If you wanna go crooked, I think I'm gonna kinda of go crooked a little bit. Okay, and now we're just going to stitch this down. I'm just going to roll this up on the side. Actually, I'm going to bring my quarter inch foot back on. So I'm putting my quarter inch foot back on. Just makes it easier for me to see. Okay, now I'm just going to stitch all the way down. And all I'm doing is filling my top fabric. So anywhere you place your top fabric, that's where I'm going.
Okay, and we are going to so. Actually, I can't use this foot because it's gathering my other fabric behind it. I knew that was an issue. Okay, let's take that foot. Off. I knew I had to change my foot. All right, so just a regular all-purpose foot is on here now. Okay, so now when I take this off, you will see what that looks like. So when you open this up and you kind of finger press it opened, okay, you will see that's our very first piece. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add another piece. I think I'm gonna grab this blue one here. And now you're gonna take this one, lay it face down on top of that one. Okay, and you just wanna make sure that you're going past the lines. I'm rolling up the other side. We're just going to stitch along that line. Okay, I'm going to open that up, finger press it, so you can see what we're doing. We're making the, the we're making it, and we're also quilting at the back. See, the quilting is already being done for us back there. All right, so let's move on to another color. Go ahead and put this down here. Bring this over. So I'm going to sew this last one. Then we'll go to my table and trim this up. Okay, that is done. So the other ones are going to be made the same exact way. Okay, so that is what we have so far. Okay, you can see the back nicely quilted already. All right, let's take this over to the table and trim it up. Okay, so to trim it, all I'm doing is flipping it over on the back side. And I'm going to trim where my batting is. Just lining it up here. This is also a really good time to straighten everything out if it's not straight. So it's easier just to do one side at a time. Okay, so I know that edge is straight. All right, I'm gonna lay this on my table. And trim. Now my finished measurement is 13, so I want to make sure I get to 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And if you're not perfect, if you're way off, which I will be on this one, you'll see. Okay, you can see I have all this extra here. That's fine. So our goal is just to trim. Okay, let's turn it around. And I'm gonna trim to 18 inches. Make sure this is straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Actually, I'm just trimming because it's really hard to line everything up. So I'm gonna just make it straight, and then we'll fit it. We'll figure out the size. I don't want all this extra hanging off, so I'm gonna come in a little bit. Make it, I'm just lining up my ruler on the lines of the bottom. Okay, so now I know I have a straight piece, okay? A little bit smaller than I wanted. This is the placement I was going by for size reference. So when I lay it on there, 
I'm a little bit smaller, but not horribly bad. Okay, but you can see the whole back of this is quilted already. Now, if you want to, you can always go across this way. The top is all quilted. I think it looks really cute. So the last thing we'll do, we'll get, we're going to do all four of our placemats the same exact way. If you find that you need to trim it a little bit smaller, what you could do to give you kind of like a safe buffer, I cut this to be exactly 13 by 18. You might want to cut it 15 by 20 to give you that wiggle room so when you're done sewing, you can make it be the 13 by 18 you need it to be. Um, but I'm okay with it being a little bit smaller. So my finished size here, if I take it over here, is roughly 17 by 12 and a half. Okay? That's my finished size, 17 by 20 or um, 17 by 13 and a half or 12 and a half. I'm sorry, 12 and a half by 17 was my finished size. So I'm a little bit smaller than what I, like I said, what I intended it to be, but I think I'm, I'm also okay with it. Okay, so then we're done this, we'll take some fabric. I don't have any with me right here, but you're going to take for your binding another two and a half inch strip. We're going to use this one for an example. Okay, you're going to fold this in half. I'm just going to finger press it here. Okay, and you're gonna, and I might, I might do white for my binding. Lay this on here. We're gonna sew it down, flip it over, and then sew it on the back side. That'll be our, that'll be our binding. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm gonna finish up the other three place mats, and we will come back when um, we're ready to do the binding. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys. I'm back. I just finished making all four place mats. You can see there's this one here. There's the back side already quilted. Then we have this one. And you can see when I put them next to each other, I don't have the fabric in the same spot. I kind of like it being random like that. So there's this one here. There's the back. Then our last one here. And I did have to trim all these down to be 12 and a half by 17. If you want them to be exact when you're done, I would recommend cutting your batting, your backing material a little bit bigger. All right, now for the binding. I do have this white fabric. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough to do this or not. I'm not gonna do a bias binding, but I'm gonna cut these into strips two and a half inches wide, probably sew them together, and we'll work on the binding next. I figured the white is a good color because there is white inside here. You can see the white inside there, and I think it'll be a good contrast against the, um, the blue backing. So our next step is to make the binding strips. So I'll see you guys soon. Alright guys, we are doing the binding. I went ahead and cut a bunch of strips two and a half inches and I did sew them together. Now I'm folding the strips in half. And what I'm going to do first is lightly spray starch them. So I'm folding them in half. And then ironing them together. Okay. Just keep on going. You can see I did do a bias binding here just so it has less bulk. And I like using this spray starch. It makes it stay a little bit flatter for me. And I may not have enough white to do all four placemats, so... I guess when I get more fabric, I'll share with you what it looks like on my dining room table. I'd rather have more binding here that I need and then just cut off the extra versus not having enough. Just folding it in half. And you can always buy the pre-made binding if you like. Okay. And our last little piece right here. So this is all done. All right, so I have a rather long strip here. 
for binding. I'm going to take this and put it onto our placemat. So I'll see you guys at the sewing machine. Alrighty, so we have our placemat. We're going to layer our binding down. And I'm having the raw edges against the raw edges here. And I'm going maybe in the middle. And I do want to leave myself a good amount of a tail. So I'm going to start sewing right about here. Let me grab a pin. Okay. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to change up my foot and use the quarter inch foot just for the top. Then I'll switch the foot around for the other side. Is good to go. All right, so we're going to bring this over. Hopefully, you guys can see it. I'm going to bring this up, get it all lined up. So, I'm using the quarter inch guide so I have that edge going against my fabric. Take my pin out, and we're just going to sew all the way down. Keeping your fabric straight with your binding. I learned in sewing it's not a race, it's a matter of um, going slow. Now, the videos I watched suggested stopping um, a quarter inch from the bottom. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit and just kind of eyeball where a quarter inch is. I'm going to back it up a little bit. Cut my fabric or my thread. Alright, so now that is sewn. So now this part is where I guess it gets tricky. You want to take this Flip your fabric around, get this lined up to where you have a 45 degree angle, then bring it back down again. And then just straighten it all out. So you're just basically boxing that in like that. And you want to start sewing where you don't want to start at the edge, you want to start where that little seam is. What I like to do is just take a little pencil or a pen and just lightly mark it there so I know where to start. And again, this is from the video I watched. All right, so that is nice and straight. Again, hold that down, bring my foot in, and grab my needle to where it's in that spot, and just keep on going along. Okay, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Alright, now is where the tricky part comes in because you can see I have all this extra. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just cut it. I'm going to cut it about here. Save that because I'll be using that. Okay, now I have all this extra. What do I do with it? You really can't tuck it in. I mean, even though that's the easiest way, what I want to do is I'm going to kind of bring them together. This is how I do it. I'm going to bring them together, let them come naturally together. Okay, and just cut about a quarter of an inch above that. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of finger press so I can see it. And then cut about a quarter of an inch or so above that. Okay, this way what I want to do now, and this is the hard part for me. I might have, I have too much. Okay. I'm going to cut a quarter inch, and I'll show you guys in a minute what I'm referring to. Okay. Let me remind the thread so you can see it better. Okay, so you can see here's where one piece ends, and I have this piece hanging over about a quarter of an inch. Can you see that? This piece hangs over that piece about a quarter of an inch. What you want to do is take them, open them up, open this one up, and we're going to, this is the hardest part, kind of bring the two ends together, and we're going to sew these. I find it easier just to kind of smush it together. Okay, making sure I'm straight with my edges there, somewhat matching my thing up in the middle. And again, this is just basically for me a guessing game. And I do find this to be the hardest part, and that's probably where I messed up before. All right, so I have that like that, and we're going to sew about a quarter of an inch. So now, what should happen, oops, what should happen is it snaps and it's down. Okay, there's no bulk there. All right, so now we can finish on. 
so I'm just going to bring this back in where I was and just continue down that line. Again, using that quarter inch guide as my... Oh. Okay, bring this down. Okay, and I'm just going to keep on sewing all the way down. And I'll probably cut off that extra bulk over there. So you can see, it's all sewn. Okay, now, what you gotta do is flip it all out. So the first thing I do is check the corners to make sure they're all connected, and they are. Just poking all the corners out. I find it easier for me to iron at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit pause on the camera, iron this, and I'll come back. All right, we are back. What I did is I just sewed all this out, okay? I'm gonna change my foot out, just using my all-purpose foot. And hopefully I'll do better on this one than I did my first one. All right, so what we're gonna do is just figure out where we wanna start. I'm gonna flip it over. All right, I'm gonna grab the binding and roll it over onto the back like such. Okay, just roll it like that toward it hides that seam. And we're gonna sew in the ditch. I'm working on the bulkiest part right now. But I wanna get this nicely started for me. Okay, I'm gonna bring it to my foot and I can see where my foot, I might just barely want to touch that white fabric. Okay, I'm going to sew a little bit. Just sew a little bit and then roll as you go. Trying to keep it straight. And I go really, really slow all the way around. I'm probably making all the professional quilters out there cringe. Okay, I'm going to stop it real quick here just to make sure I'm catching the end. And you can see I didn't even catch it. I might only caught a little bit of it. So we're going to fold it down again. You can probably pin if you want to. I just think it's really, really hard to pin it. So I'm just going to kind of roll it. Bring that back under there. Okay. So just roll it nice and tight. I want to stay at the very, very edge of that white. I'm not really, I'm not stretching it, I'm just rolling it. Okay, so just keep on loosening it up, my needle's down, rolling it, holding it, sewing it. And now when I get to the end, I like to go straight off. I just think it's easier for me that way. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna roll this nice and tight. And I'm going right up to where they intersect. I'm gonna back it up a little bit and cut. Okay, so I can see I got most of that, but I missed right here. So I'm just gonna kind of pinch it and come back in just to make sure I grab that part that I missed. I mean, you can also, what I think is probably easier in my case would be to hand bind it or hand stitch it closed. That's probably easier for me anyway. Okay, so I have it pretty much down. Now I'm gonna grab this end and fold it over. Okay, just fold that over and I'm gonna continue on this way. And I just grab the top first. I work with that first. 
sorry, I hit the camera. Can I just kind of get this? Just fold this over first. I'm just gonna hold that, bring my sewing machine back in, and then sew this down first, just to kind of get them connected. So I'm bringing my presser foot in, my foot or my needle right where they meet, and sew. Okay, then I'll just work my way around the entire thing. So I'm just rolling it over again. Okay, and just keep on working your way around it. I'm actually going to go all the way down, then I'm going to flip it over to see, to make sure I got everything. And I'm stopping where they meet. Let's take it out and see how we did. Okay, so you can see that was much better, but I missed a little piece here. So again, I'm just going to grab it, pinch it, bring that in so I know roughly about where it is. And I'm going to go in a little bit tighter. Roll that in there. Okay, so we got it that time, and we did. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do the same thing with this corner. I'm gonna just fold it down, pinch it, get it started, then work my way around. And I'll, I'll see you guys when I'm done the entire thing. Alrighty guys, well we had sewn two um, placemats with our binding. Um, the binding is not perfect at all, but I think the important thing is I face the fear, the binding is on there, um, and I'm happy with it. You know, for, for my first time trying binding, I like it, because it is not perfect at all. There's the back side. Um, there's placemat one, then we have number two. In fact, one of these has more of a rounded corner. I think it's this one, yeah, you can see. More of a rounded corner, so it's not even perfectly straight. And also on the back, you can see here, hopefully you can see it, my sewn line is right there. It's basically more on this side, so you don't have all that extra picking up there. Um, but I'm happy with it for my first one. Like I said, it's not perfect. I'll probably make a few quilters cringe if they watch this video, but I think it's okay for my first time. I also think this project is really good for a first-time sewer. All you're basically doing is sewing strips of fabric together, and I think the fun part is you're allowed to be crooked. Um, I think it adds interest to it. You can see um, they're not straight, um, so it's kind of like no rule sewing. And I love the fact you're quilting as you're going, so you're limiting that step. Um, as far as the binding, you can either make your own. I chose to make mine. I just cut strips of white material two and a half inches wide. I sewed them together and then attached the binding. Or you can just pick up um, the pre-made binding as well. So there's placement number one and placement number two. I'm not sure if I have enough white to finish off the other two. It'll be really close. I do have a lot of this extra fat quarter pieces left. I might um, make, I might kind of make a patchwork thing and maybe make a table runner. Well, we shall see. But I, I mean, maybe like a trivet or something for the kitchen. Um, but overall, I think they're kind of cute. All right, so the next video is what you guys are going to vote on, or my next sewing project, maybe not the next video. You need to pick a color, yellow or green. We're making a handbag. Um, they're going to be two-toned. So it'll either be green on top with the green um, polka dot or the green stripe with the green liner with a white zipper. So it'll be a zippered bag or we have yellow. So the yellow will be a solid yellow with this on the bottom. This is like a gray polka dot has yellow and white in it with the yellow um, li uh, lined lining with a yellow zipper. So leave me a comment if you're gonna see the yellow bag or the green bag. And these are all just fat quarters. I got these from Walmart. I wanna say they each measure 18 by 22. I think that's what a fat quarter size is. Plenty enough to make a purse. So yellow or the green. Um, yellow is my favorite color. I think it's really fun for summer. But I do like these patterns better together because I think that yellow is just really, really dark. Um, this one here, it's kind of like fluorescent. But either way, whatever you guys pick is the bag we'll make. Um, any questions, guys, about the process, please let me know. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the really long video. Um, but again, any questions, let me know. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.